Hello everyone, and welcome to this video on revisions within this course. So, with the essays within this course that students write, uh, they will be allowed to write revisions so long as they meet the following criteria. They need to submit the paper on time. This means getting it in, not after the deadline, but before the deadline. They need to meet the word count expectation each, pa each major essay in this course has a minimum word count, and that doesn't include quotes. So whatever your paper is, it has to be the word count minus the quotes has to meet what the expected word count is. The paper can't be plagiarized. If, you, if you're caught plagiarizing um, for a paper, you will not be given the opportunity for revision. And you have to meet the spirit of the word count. So I've had students in the past try to do, well, try to pack their essay with extra words, either through being overly wordy or saying the same sentence in three different ways, or sometimes even writing several sentences that have nothing to do with the paper just to meet the word count. So for this to in order to gain a revision you really do need to meet the spirit of the word count not just the word count itself and typically what happens with revisions they're due f about one week from when the paper the graded paper is returned so if i were to return the paper on monday the revision wouldn't be due until the following monday so you have some time to revise it so why do i allow for revisions and what's what's the purpose about it, what's useful about it. Um, first, it's often obvious that what students submit are first drafts. Not all students, but many students will not complete the paper until an hour or two before the paper is due. And when they finish the paper, when they finish writing the paper, that's the point at which they pass it in. They don't take the time to edit it, they don't take the time to have somebody else take a look at it or give themselves some time before coming back to it. So what they're often passing is first drafts and I tend to want students to do more than first drafts so I'm going, I, I this is one way I can allow for that. And the other reason I allow for revisions is that students often need help with their writing and I shouldn't just say students say everyone needs help with their writing I need help with my writing uh, I I regularly write things and I am continually revising them uh, either through the help of others or my you know just through continually rereading and thinking about every sentence every word that I've put in the paper I also give students honest feedback and grading. And what I mean by this is, and you'll see this with your first paper, you'll get a significant amount of feedback identifying issues and problems with your paper. Uh, and it's not uncommon for students in my class to get a paper back with anywhere between 20 and 40 comments on it on different things from spelling and grammar to content style and you know the, the a evaluation of their critique or, or I'm sorry of their analysis that's all there to help the student understand where their paper is strong and where their paper needs some work and it's all there because I expect that if the grade isn't where the student wants to be he or she has the opportunity to revise the paper so that honest feedback is there to help the student it's not there to attack the student personally it's there to really help the student get to where he or she wants their paper to be and to have a good honest assessment of where their writing is and it's really preparing you for life beyond college it's giving you by the time you finish my course with the different writing uh, assignments that we have you should have a good grip of your writing strengths and weaknesses and this is important because you're going to be communicating through the written word in numerous different circumstances not just in, you, this is not just so you write better papers but this is so that you write better for all of your for all of your opportunities in life because uh, it is a key tool of it is a key tool of our society and it's best to have you know the better you are at it the the easier it is to do and, and the better return you get on it so things to understand about grading and revision process um, 
strong writing takes time and planning. I can tell you right now that even my own experience that usually if I don't give myself enough time in planning around a writing project, my editors rip me a new one. Um, they certainly know when I've given it time and consideration and when I haven't. And this is something you should be thinking about about writing. Um, all writing can use more revising and this is something to think about it just it's really useful to con you know to always go back and look at your writing with a fresh set of eyes have somebody else look at your writing uh, it can't help you enough uh, writing is just it's it's not well as some would say it's an art and therefore there's all sorts of ways in which you know you can improve upon that art the comments that I give you on those papers, those are meant to guide you. They're meant to identify what, where obstacles and challenges are for you in your writing. They are not a personal attack. I have the utmost respect for my students in their writing, in really trying to put these, you know, write these papers. My comments are showing that respect in that I'm trying to give you material to work with so that you can make that paper even better. Um, and so along those lines, you know, the grade that you receive is not a representative of you as a person, right? So if you get a grade on a paper that isn't good, that's not saying you aren't a good person. That's saying where this paper currently stands, it's not where it needs to be for a college level paper. So keep that in mind and really, you know, use that to help improve your writing and not take it as a personal attack. So again grades are markers where for where students can improve right so this is just you're thinking of this as if a hundred is the end of the race and you get a 65 that's not a permanent especially in this because you can revise the paper that's not a permanent state that's saying okay you got 65 of the way there you can still get the other 35 if you just take these tips or these these recommendations into consideration while revising um, just as you as you deal with or as you look at the these remarks really just you know don't get dismayed by them it can you can get a paper back and there can be a lot of comments on it but that's not a bad thing that's actually giving you a lot of different ways to improve your paper so think about think about the fact that this paper with its feedback is personalized it is there for you to really improve and get a better result and you know the thing to remember about revisions is that they can bring you to your desired grade there's nothing stopping you getting up to a hundred no matter what you get on that first score uh, regularly I see students who when they take the revision process seriously you know they get anywhere from 20 to 30 more points than what their original paper is so if you think about that if you came into you know if you got a 70 there's nothing stopping you getting a hundred in the revision right so keep that in mind that this this is a very good opportunity for you to get to where you want to be with your grades Alright, so how do you deal with revisions? What do you do with them once you get them? The first is read all of the comments on the paper. This is the one thing students, if, if they don't do, is going to hurt their performance because that's what I, I'm giving the students all, I'm giving you all of those comments to work with. So you want to make sure you read them all and you understand them all. Read the grading rubric. I assign a grade at the end of each paper. There's a grading rubric. In that grading rubric, I give some larger points about what the issues are or where the paper might have come up short. Make a plan on how to tackle the revisions. This can be, okay, on Monday I'm going to deal with X in the paper. On Tuesday I'm going to deal with Y in the paper. On Wednesday I'm going to deal with Z. Um, but really give yourself a good, clear plan on how you're going to take care of this given the week that you have to get it back. If necessary or useful, schedule a meeting with with the instructor. I'm happy to meet with you to clarify any particular issues or, or concerns or questions you might have about the paper. So you're always welcome to do that. Um, and make sure you address all of the issues brought up in the revision. Um, you have the opportunity there 
to fix everything. So to not fix everything is saying, well, I really don't need those points. Or I really don't want those points. And if you're going to revise, then yes, you're saying I, I want more points, so there's no reason not to fix it. Um, so I would say revise the paper based on the comments, and before passing it in, give it one more rereading. And that's really important, because in the revision process, you're bound to change things in your paper. And if you change things in your paper, they might affect other parts of your paper. You might take out a quote, and later on in the paper, if you're referring to that quote, and it's not there, it makes the paper confusing. So make sure once you've addressed all the changes, you read through it and you identify anything that might have been shifted or changed along the way. Alright, um, if you have any questions, by all means, contact me via email um, on the discussion board on, uh, in the classroom or um, any other possible way you can you can talk to me but hopefully this has been useful and I look forward to seeing your papers thank you